this video is very applicable to anyone with a problem with their bladder, whether it's urinary urgency, okay, leaky bladder, incomplete urination or frequent urination, or you get up several times at night, this video is for you. And unfortunately, when you do a Google search on this topic, you're going to find pure trash, okay? All of these sites that you go to say almost the exact same thing. And what they do is they just hire search engine optimization people, SEO people, to write articles. These people have no experience, but they just get the keywords and they create articles and then they rank on Google. So it's extremely difficult to find anything valuable on Google related to health information, especially the bladder. And unless you know what to search for and some possible links, it's very, very difficult. I have the advantage of just have been in practice for 30 years. So I've seen things that I would never have connected the dots unless I had that practical experience. So when we talk about the urinary bladder, we're talking about um, a muscle that stores urine and releases urine. So we have this muscle that surrounds your bladder, okay? It's called the detrusor muscle. And if we look at the common thread to all these bladder problems, it's actually a problem with the nervous system. I'm gonna explain why. We have a valvular system that's controlled, and that also involves smooth muscle as well as the neurological supply. And the main control with urine elimination really stems from your brain. It's called periaqueductal gray matter. Not that you need to know that, but there's a part of the brain that is in control of this bladder, okay? And it connects to the nervous system. And this part of the brain is very vulnerable and sensitive to a thiamine deficiency, a B1 deficiency. In fact, other parts of the autonomic nervous system that's involved with this bladder control are also very vulnerable to vitamin B1 deficiencies. I found some fascinating information, which I shared down below in the description, on the link, the very strong link between a B1 deficiency and your bladder problem that you're having right now. Whether the bladder is overworking or underworking, B1 seems to be the common thread. And this also makes sense if you look at a diabetic, right? When we're talking about diabetes type 2, there's like 50 to 70% of those people who have bladder problems. Now, if you watch some of my other videos, you saw this huge connection between diabetes and peripheral neuropathy problems, okay? I'm talking about the, the numbness in the bottom of the feet or the pain in the bottom of the feet relates to a B1 deficiency. I've done other videos on diabetics having just general problems with their autonomic nervous system, and there's a name for that, diabetic autonomic neuropathy. So anytime you have a problem with neuropathies, like nerve problems, you really want to look at this B1 because there's a huge connection. B1 uh, is involved in the myelin sheath uh, production around the nerve, and B1 is also necessary for the production of energy, uh, especially if it's from carbohydrates or glucose. And so the more carbohydrates or glucose that are used by the body, okay, the more B1 is needed. Now, a B1 deficiency in the brain can even starve off the energies of certain neurons in the brain and cause a lack of function in those brain neurons. As in this case, that part of the brain that controls the bladder actually is shrinking and you're losing function of the entire control system. And this can be a very common thing when we age, especially if someone's a diabetic, a pre-diabetic, or they have chronic insulin resistance, which is very common. It's like 60 to 70% of the population. And this is another reason why so many people get so much relief when they start to cut the carbs out of the diet and in relief with bladder issues. So it is true that your bladder problems could be coming from, let's say a prostate enlargement or a prolapsed bladder if you're a female, or you have this infection in your bladder, or of course you're drinking way too much water before you go to bed, or you have, um, I don't know, fibroid, whatever. All of these are valid, 
but there's something a lot more common involved in all of these bladder issues, and that is a B1 deficiency. And if you don't know that, okay, you may end up at the doctor's office uh, getting more medication, maybe a surgery, and not fully fixing this problem. So here are some simple things you can do. You need to first correct the B1 deficiency. And I would recommend correcting it with two different types of B1. One is a fat-soluble B1 called benfotamine. And two is a natural water-soluble regular B1. But you want to make sure it's natural, not synthetic. And I would take both of these remedies for about two to three months, okay? Because if you are very, very deficient, it's going to take a while to build up. But for most people, they should start seeing improvement within the first two weeks. Now, number two, you want to stop the depleting of B1. There's many things that can deplete B1, but the most common thing is a high-carb diet. So you need to get on a low-carb diet diet, okay? And that also includes doing intermittent fasting. Now, the next thing you can do, which I highly recommend, is based on this. You have two types of receptors in the bladder, okay, for urine. You have mechanical receptors, which involve pressure or volume of urine, okay? But you also have chemoreceptors, which involve the concentration of urine. So, for example, if you don't have a lot of urine, because maybe you're not drinking a lot, your urine can be very, very concentrated. And despite having a lot of urine, you might just need to go. Yet when you go, not a lot comes out. So just by drinking enough fluid through the day, and I'm talking about like two and a half liters of fluid, not past six or seven o'clock at night, okay, you can dilute the urine to the point where the need for urination is less at night. And you can also try that as well. In addition to drinking this extra water, you may also benefit from adding apple cider vinegar to your water. Why? Because apple cider vinegar can greatly help your blood sugars, okay? Especially if you have insulin resistance. I've done a lot of videos on this. Apple cider vinegar is like a real simple thing to do. You put one to two tablespoons in your water when you drink it, and it can greatly help your blood sugars. And then you might find, based on how much caffeine you consume is to reduce the caffeine beverages to maybe a, a small cup of coffee in the morning, but not a lot of coffee that is caffeine because the caffeine can really um, affect your bladder in a big way. And just by reducing your caffeine, that can make a huge difference. Now, the last thing I would recommend is to manually massage the bladder. Okay, why? Because your bladder over time can be congested, uh, it could be atrophied. And if you press into your bladder within your tolerance and just kind of massage around that area, and then you might find that you need to urinate right after that. I used to recommend this in practice and it really helped stimulate um, the bladder to actually get more tone into the bladder and to help push out some of the residual urine that could be potentially sitting in your bladder for too long. Now, there are many other things that can cause a B1 deficiency beyond just um, sugar and carbs, okay? And I really highly recommend that you watch this video on that topic right here.